Hi, this is your host, Apnil Bharatiya, and welcome to our yearly prediction series. Today we have with us John Emeril, co-founder and CEO of Slim AI. John, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks, Bob. Great to be here. Of course, you know, I'm going to ask you to grab your crystal ball and share your predictions with us. But before we do that, let's just do a quick intro of the company. What is Slim AI all about? Slim.ai is a Series A startup company. We focus on software supply chain security. Our product is a, is a SaaS security product. It focuses on containerized workloads, and, and our aim in the company is to help uh, publishers and consumers, uh, companies that use containerized workloads, um, and publishers, companies that create software as containerized workloads. We help them build trust and transparency between those so that uh, they can consume and, and, and do that uh, in a secure way, consume those containers. As part of that, our system can analyze, evaluate, and even remove vulnerabilities so we can automate the process of vulnerability management for containerized workloads in a collaborative um, environment where teams can work together to secure things um, in, 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 uh, in collaboration. Now, let's you know, look at your crystal ball and see what predictions you have for us. Uh, we've been in this software supply chain security market for a while. It's uh, it's a it's a pretty broad term, but in, in general, it means can how do organizations tackle the idea of securing the software they use and create, going reaching all the way back to wherever that software comes from, including open source software. It's been an emerging field, and over the years, we've seen it transform from something that's notional and a high level idea, nice to have, into something important. So my first prediction is, 2024 is the year that software supply chain security transitions from figure it out like it was in 2023 to make it happen in 2024. It's a boardroom conversation now. And, um, and we've done a survey of, uh, of roughly 250 senior executives inside of organizations. And, and this is the year they've decided to implement programs where they take control of this. And that includes building better and more secure software um, by making sure that they're consuming safe and secure software and all of the things that go along with protecting themselves, including um, cryptographic integrity, making sure their build systems are working right, making sure that that the software they're using has low vulnerabilities and all that. And I think this is a watershed year for that. My second prediction is uh, the need to change in that regard is going to be driven by our governments, the U.S. government and the and the um, European governments, uh, the European Union's proactive stance on on recommendations and regulations in this regard. They will start to mandate that companies um, uh, are taking responsibility for the security and integrity of the software that they they put in production, that they run, and that their customers rely on, that the these organizations rely on. It will become something similar, I think, eventually to a security version of SOX, Sarbanes-Oxley. Back in the day when uh, there was a lot of um, kind of financial governance problems, financial management problems, and business governance problems. The federal government started out by um, U.S. federal government started out by creating recommendations, and they they were doing a lot of um, legal work and even some prosecutions, right? And that led to uh, organizations uh, uh, having to change their behavior. Sarbanes Oxley came out; it became a requirement, a legal requirement. I see the tide shifting toward um, uh, the burden of cybersecurity to become one of these mandatory things. If you want to be a public company or even a federal agency. Um, in the EU and in the United States, I think that these governments will start to make it a mandatory thing. And that's going to drive pressure on the software supply chain, of course, because if a company's consuming your software and it's part of their business and they're subject to this scrutiny, well, you're going to have to be a more high integrity and responsible and transparent provider. And that will drive uh, the software supply chain um, uh, importance among the whole community of developers. And there's some risks along with this because certainly this could change the relationship between open source providers and and the, and the commercial um, world. That's interesting to see how this will shake out. There are pluses and minuses to it. And the third is for all this to actually work, I think the 2024 will mark a transition in, uh, in, in, in the idea of collaboration as a cornerstone of transparency and trust between stakeholders in the software supply chain. You think of an open source um, or even a commercial software vendor. You're producing software that these public companies consume, and, and their responsibility is to make sure that's very secure. Historically, um, the incentives on both sides has been to, um, in effect, um, 
manage security based on each other's business outcome goals. And, and for a producer, that's often to try to, to build a kind of a minimally viable security so that you can effectively transact, get your software sold or get it used, et cetera. The value in the software and the capability of the software was always much higher in priority because that's how your business runs to the security of it. And so it was a disincentive for you to spend a lot of time securing things, especially for an open source software producer. It's something that's kind of a tax. Um, and it's something that um, can actually create friction for your business if, 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 the, if your consumers you know, want to push on you to change the security. Now, if this software supply chain security world evolves like I described, these consumers of software will have high mandates to make sure that they're enforcing security requirements on the vendors, on open source, and it will change the relationship. And the only way for that to work easily and with low overhead is for the two parties to collaborate, for them to understand each other's posture, for producers and consumers to come together in a common place, have open discussions about the security, share findings, so that there's not a lot of duplicate work and there's a lot of um, speed and and um, and um, ease at coming to some conclusion about what's secure enough means. So those are the three things I think will, will happen in 2024. I think that things are lining up and uh, and and even more um, even more you know criticality will happen because with AI right the rate of uh, of new software development is going up exponentially the rate of new of new risks are going up exponentially uh, we need to find a better way and software supply chain security is kind of the way um, there and I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that this will be our the year for change now let's look at what kind of challenges do you see are going to be there for the ecosystem, for the market, for the industry, and even for Slim AI to tackle. The role of the chief information security officer keeps getting harder and harder, right? Um, you know, the acceleration at which, you know, uh, the bad actors can go is, is insane. Like the AI is going to power them up. That job is a really challenging job. We've recently seen cases where there's been a breach and the CISO, the chief information office security officer, gets indicted we've even seen some get get um convicted of of negligence uh this is a really hard job uh, right and 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 businesses and our you know our our world today our our economy um, all of this depends on these folks ability to do their jobs software supply chain security will add another element of complexity to their jobs there it's, it's it's expanding so i think i think the the biggest challenge will be how do we manage all this change? How do we govern it? And I see the chief information security officer as the cornerstone, the kind of the head of the of the spear, so to speak, in, in driving these changes. We really need board, boards of directors, companies to stand behind them. We need our government to understand the criticality in that role. And we need to power them up with tools, some regulations, so they know what it means to do their job well, so they're not flying in the dark. And we need to um, help them with better tools and better capabilities. So part of my company's job is to try to build, give automations and capabilities to those organizations to make them uh, run better and do their jobs more easily. But we all need to stand behind the chief information security officer. Their challenge in 2024 will just get harder. And, um, and for my company, certainly, um, that means that you know, we, we want to focus on, on, um, on continuing to build and evolve our product. Uh, we're seeing a lot of good traction in uh, our ability to help companies remove vulnerabilities and make the, the problem of software supply chain security easier through collaboration. Um, you know, we're really just focused on getting our customers to be successful, for them to meet their objectives and to create value. And that value really comes in, in them having less work and more speed at, at ensuring that the software they put in production and create their business applications from is secure and trusted. And that's really our mission, to help companies do that better. And what is going to be the focus of Slim AI or your focus this year? Yeah, certainly in, in 2024, as I said, it's, um, you know, in our company, we're really about innovating and driving you know, better solutions to solve some of these key problems I described. We're really focused on this software supply chain security problem and the ability to bring, bring consumers and producers of software together in a common place uh, and make it easier for them to transact trust and build better secure software together i think um the the old age of uh of of i i have my security program you have your security program we don't really talk um 
you know, security through obscurity, lack of transparency, opaqueness is a is an old school thought pattern. We really need vendors and software developers and 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 software you know creators to to work more collaboratively. Our platform helps you do that and and automate a lot of the work to get there. John, thank you so much for taking time out today and share your predictions. Of course, I'll I'll have you again next year to not only see how many of these predictions turn out to be true, but also get the next set of predictions. I really appreciate your time with it. Thank you. I, I'd love that opportunity. Thanks again, Swap. I love the show. Um, good luck.